All right, what we see here is the presenter putting on his safety gear. Woo! Let me tighten these straps for you guys. Thank you. We could also make like a tutorial about how to put on a harness. Good, yes. Is there anything we should be noticing in particular? Um, well, the legs are the most important thing. And you actually have to have this red band in front. That's also very important. Otherwise, it'll be backwards. <laughs> okay. okay. So, for you guys who don't know, this is a rock climbing harness. Let's open this up. Can I do that from here? Yeah. I don't trust it. No. Do it. Yeah. It might take a while, because it's like one point. No, never mind, it's good. It took a while to move. It's gigabytes. Yeah. Yeah. It took a while to move, dog. <sighs> oh! That's right. From the beginning. Um, so, it's called Throw Yourself. You are crazy, because that is Doc, what he said to me when I uh, talked to him about doing this lab. And I didn't really, like, take it seriously, but I figured out why he said that after a while. <laughs> Uh, buttons. Easy, easy, it's a large file. Uh oh. I think you just I advanced several like slides. Three. Uh, here we go. Alright, so this is just kind of some basic lab stuff. I'm just kind of predicting what would happen with the different types of ropes and materials that I use. Um, let me tell you what I did for the procedure. I actually went to Hudson Elementary. I don't know if anyone. Whoa went there, but I like the monkey bars in particular, so that's where I went. Um, what I did was I had a bunch of ropes. Ugh. Here you go, man. Don't you want to look at those? There's, um, so I'll explain the different types of ropes, but what I did is I tied a bow tie knot, and it's a pretty cool strong knot that I use, and I tied it to the top of monkey bars, tied it on a carabiner or a cribbiner, whatever you want to say. So quick release one, so it goes on this thing, and I measured out a meter from the monkey bars to the bottom of the rope, or to the part of the rope I was using, put some tape around it, so I knew what a meter was. And I threw myself off of the monkey bars. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, so I was measuring impulse. Um, explain some stuff that I use. Yeah, Thank you, Prem. Um, oh yeah, so this is all the stuff that I kept constant. Um, so I used a regular regulation rock climbing rope, which is 10 millimeters. Um, uh, they're all over 15 feet long. Didn't really matter. I had lots of left. I needed to. This is just um, showing you what impulse is using newtons. I think it's second law. Um, it was actually almost a sample calculation too. Was showing you how I got my first one. Um, I didn't really use change in um, velocity, and I'll tell you why later. That was the plan at some point. This is a lot. I'll walk you guys through it, so don't like have to read on. Um, so these are all the different types of ropes that I could have used, but I didn't use all of them. I used like three, I think. I used these three um, because some of them were just kind of redundant, like the polyethylene rope. Um, it's pretty much the same as polypropylene, which is actually I did use. It's just like slightly heavier, and like Cecil rope and Manila rope. Those are like natural fiber ropes, and I would probably die if I used those because they have like no elasticity to them. Um, I use a nylon and I use polyester too. This is explaining what characteristics of ropes and all the braids. So there's different types of braids, and they they help with elasticity or strength, and like they're kind of um, like inversely related to each other. So um, and also dynamic and static ropes. That's very important. You use dynamic ropes for rock climbing because they are meant to be like fallen on. Static ropes are more meant to like if you're like lifting something up or even like a person while rock climbing, that would use a static rope. So I use dynamic ropes for this. Um, yeah, there's treatments and stuff that's meant to repel water, which is actually I use that in my lab too. This is the natty to rope. Um, the mantle is like the outside thing. It's also called a sheet, and there's like twists on the inside, and they make bundles and cores, which helps it stretch pretty much. Um, yeah, that's how they make it. Um, don't really need to read all of that because you're never going to use that knowledge again. Um, so this is talking about the sheet, the outside part. So yeah, so it's saying there's yeah, the tightness of the weave depends on how strong the rope is. 
and there's like a different patterns. Like it says two on two yarns over two. That means like they braid on the inside, so that makes it very strong. Uh, keep going. Yeah, dynamic and uh, twist relation to elongation of feel. So a big thing with rock climbers is the ropes will twist. That's what the sheath is for. It's also for elasticity, but it's mainly meant to so it doesn't twist up when you're like climbing with it, which is would be hazardous or fatal. Um, this is what I was kind of doing, and uh, it's actually pretty cool. Um, ignore some of those; those are practice points. But I would pretty much. I look like an 8-bit character. It's kind of cool. But um, that high-speed camera like really dulls down the low quality, which is fine. But then putting it here made it even worse. But I pretty much just mapped out my ball using different points, and um, you can even see like some bit of recoil as I bounce back up, which is kind of neat. Um, uh, here's a video. Can I get the play? Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. So, I'm going to kind of explain why I'm positioned. I'm not actually holding on right now, but it kind of looks like it. Um, I had to position myself to where my body was, like, in front of the monkey bars, because if I just dropped down like this, the rope would kind of, like, go in between my legs, and I'd go... Pfft. Yeah, that was not a fun experience. I actually did that to myself. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I had to, like, lift myself up like this, or I had to, like, this, the monkey bars, and this kind of let go. Back east. and I would map out my fall, and then that's how I got my data. Um, this graph doesn't really have anything in relation, it's just to help you see where everything is. These are all the different impulses, and these are the different ropes. Nylon was by far the best, this is actually what I predicted. Um, we have polyester, which is supposedly just like slightly worse than nylon, it's actually a little bit more water resistant, though, which is um, pretty cool. The twisted polypropylene um, was, it was still pretty decent. Like, I don't have anything that was really bad, but that's because I would have been hurt if I used one of them. So it's kind of, um, you can still see a pretty good difference between like the nylon and the rest of it. Actually over here, if you see this one, it's called soap nylon. It's because nylon, if you get it wet, it's supposed to lose like its elasticity by like 50%. And I did do like show you the error on that one. Um, so over here you can see the different values. You don't have to read all the decimal points, but yeah, Doc? No, you don't have to put all the decimal points. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which of those would you describe as the most elastic or best dynamic rope for choosing? Uh, nylon by far would be the best elastic rope. Because it has the highest impulse, I should say that. It has the highest impulse because I used if I went all the way back to the beginning, you can see that I used my, um, I guess my force of my body, because I used my mass in kilograms, which I think, I don't know what it was, but my force came out to be like 600 and I think 49 um, newtons, and I multiplied that by the seconds it took for my body to completely stop. Yes. So that's actually a, a big issue because you don't know the force that the rope is exerting. If yeah. the force were just exerting your weight, then you'd be in equilibrium, right? Yeah. And then you wouldn't be stopping. So you know that the force that's upward on you when, as you stop, is much greater than your weight. And that's why these ropes are so important, because they need to exert an enormous force. Yeah. So there's like a, there's a calculation error. And one thing that I'm wrestling with is the impulse should be the same. If the impulse is the change in momentum of your body, and you perform the same starting position and ending position, then you should have the same velocity, right? Okay. Screw it to GH, your velocity at the bottom. So your initial velocity should be the same, and your final velocity should be the same, and your mass should be the same. So I think the impulse should be the same. So I'm, I mean, I know you've got data here, mm -hmm. but I'm wondering a better way to interpret it. Yeah, I try to use velocity, but if I went, um, I could show you what it was like. It was not cool. Um, at the beginning, it was like saying I was going like a couple of hundred meters per second, and then I plugged in some stuff to the video analysis, like saying, oh, these are the frame rates, I tried to show what an actual meteor was, mm -hmm. and the distance from the camera, and it made it even worse, saying I was going like 70,000 meters per second, I was like, no. So I well, let's really that. quick run through a screw 2 gh to figure out how fast you should have been going. The screw 2 gh Well, that should be your velocity at the end of that meter, right? Um, so approximately, what should your speed be? 
Get us a screw two yeah, GH sure sitting up there so we can look at it. About two meters high. I thought you said you were, had a one meter rope. Yeah. I had, oh yeah. Well, yeah, but I was falling from a greater distance than the one meter. Oh. You don't want to land on the ground, though. Yeah, I didn't want to land on the ground because my feet would have hit and would like messed up was the fall. Was your center of mass starting above the monkey bars? How far above the monkey bars was your center of mass? Well, actually, my waist was right at the monkey bars. So that means you fell a meter. Yeah. About, yeah. So okay. Route 20. Route Yeah. Okay. So what? Approximately four. How much? Like 14, 15. Four and a half meters per second or something. That that sounds. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay. Cool. So it would be really good to revisit this graph and try to structure it again. I'm going to yeah. let you continue from here, though, so that you can continue telling us what you know. Cool. Um, I, this is error on the, uh, the soaked rope because I couldn't use my change of velocity because I did it wrong and it was not cool in the video analysis. Um, so yeah, I got 32.56% uh, really, or yeah, error on it. And it's supposed to be about 40 to 50, but also using it more than once kind of screws up the rope because it's different from when it's brand new and then used slightly. You should throw it away after it's used, generally? No, but it's out of the bag, it's the best because, and also it'd be helpful if you like um, shorten the, the sheath again because it kind of tightens up after using it, and especially since I was like hanging there for a little bit. I don't know. Um, also, this could be the rope because there's different braids, and I think it was a double braided nylon rope, which means that it was more made for strength. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So my conclusion is this hurt a lot more than I expected. Um, so I guess if I were to revisit that, I would um, I would do um, using the actual velocity as my force for the impulse, and you can see that. Um, they, you can see like the differences better on the graph and how like similar the impulses were, I guess. Um, um, other things I wanted to do with this lab, because uh, I wanted to test, it would be cool to go back and test buoyancy on the propylene, or polypropylene ropes, because they're meant to float in the water, which is not what the nylons are meant to do, but they're also, they're both marine ropes, which is interesting. Um, it was hard to use different braids because I wanted to see, I actually came in this lab trying to see what the different braids would do, but a lot of UIAA standards, there was a lot of safety stuff going on, and um, they are like, you can't have certain ropes with different braids because it won't work and they will break, so that wasn't fun. Um, and also kind of wanted to do like a, to see how much chalk affects like if you know what climbing, like you use chalk back, bags of chalk in your hands, so you can climb better and it's like better for your grip and strength. Um, I want to see what that did, like how much of a difference that actually made. So I could do a lot of things to revisit this lab, but it was I was actually kind of satisfied with it, so I'm still okay with what happened because I think it was really cool to see. Um, so yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? We only have time for one. Okay, cool. Thanks again, Ian.